So this is the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, and it's pretty good. If you want to stop right there and just say, well, that's the entire review, that's actually pretty much it. If you're looking for some dedicated Home Assistant voice hardware, this thing is probably what you want. So a while back, I had demoed Home Assistant voice with this kind of hardware where it's a USB speaker phone that you plug into your Home Assistant server and it worked okay. But there were some issues, especially with like wake word detection and audio quality, especially because this type of hardware just didn't do very well with echo and noise rejection. Turn on Espresso. Sorry, I am not aware of any device called Espresso. Turn on Espresso. Sorry, I couldn't understand that. Well, I'm happy to say that the Home Assistant Voice Preview does not have those problems due to some onboard noise cancellation hardware. Okay, Nabu. Turn on Espresso. Turned on the switch. Okay, Nabu. Turn off espresso. Turned off the switch. All right, so let's take a look at the enclosure here. So this is injection molded. I've seen some other reviews that somebody said that this was 3D printed. It's, it's not. So on the top, there is a little jog wheel similar to like an old iPod or something from Apple. It's also got a clicky button in the middle. The ring does not have buttons. Again, it is simply to go up and down with a circular motion. You've got two microphone ports on the top and that's actually how it's able to do really high quality noise rejection and able to pick up your voice even in a room. I've used this thing for over a week now and it's worked even with the TV on in noisier environments at a pretty reliable level. So on the front, you've got the output for the speaker. There is a dedicated hardware on off switch, so you can actually disable the microphones mechanically. So that will actually break the circuit. And then on the back, you've got USB for power. You've got a little RCA port for an audio out. Now these are all open source. That means the hardware design is also open sourced in addition to the software. So this is basically an ESP home device. And so you can get all the firmware online. You can get all of the designs for the enclosure and the design for the PCB are all available online. So to get into this, we're just gonna pop the feet out on the bottom and then there are just four screws. And then again, internally, the PCB is also held in with four screws. Speaker module is in the bottom. And then here's the back of the PCB. So here we've got the PCB and the main brains right here and ESP32 S3. So like I said, this is basically an ESP home device, but the real magic is in this chip right here, which is an XMOS chip. And that's where all the fancy audio processing go for voice detection. So this does use on device wake word. And so this can be ran anywhere over Wi-Fi, it does not have to be directly connected to your Home Assistant server. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth on the PCB for the simple reason that, like I said, this is open source, so you can look up the full schematic and the PCB layup online. So there's no need for me to go through this thing and show you how everything works and what all's in here, because again, all that is available online. You can go look up the PCB stack up. You can go look up all the code, how everything's connected. Again, if you wanted to build this, they basically give you all the files so that you could actually build this thing yourself if you want it. So setup for these things is simple enough that I'm not even gonna walk you through it. They include a little card that's got a QR code on it. So you just pick up your phone, use the QR code, to get the device hooked up to your phone, you give it the Wi-Fi password, then it's gonna be found in Home Assistant. And it's got a walkthrough little setup and it gets everything configured for you. If you don't have your Wyoming chain and all that stuff set up, it just puts all that in there for you. You click one button, it adds itself to ESP Home. It's pretty straightforward. There's just nothing to it. And after that, it just works. Okay, well, let's give you a little demo. When I said this thing does a great job, I'll just show you how good a job it does. Okay, Nabu, turn on the kitchen lights. Turned on the light. 
Now with that, of course, that's what you would expect for any dedicated voice hardware to do. Where I've found that this is a vast improvement on my old setup is, again, the superior noise cancellation and ability to detect wake up words no matter what. So similar to my last demo, and again, if you watch that video where the old system really started to fall off is whenever I wasn't close to the unit. So I'm going to go down the hall and we'll give this thing a shot at detecting voice and interpreting my words from a distance. Okay, Nabu. Turn off the kitchen lights. Turned off the light. So as you can see, the onboard voice detection and wake word are way more capable than my old setup. I've also been able to use a larger whisper model because I'm running this on better hardware now, but do be aware that the wake word itself is on board, whereas my old system, the wake word detection actually ran on the Home Assistant server. So whenever this thing hears me say, okay, Nabu, that's all on board. That doesn't actually have to talk to the server at all. So uh, I'm going to fire up a video right now, and it is going to be a bit of a mess, but I'm doing this just to show you how good the wake word detection is. Now, once the wake word gets the system going, it's just going to be streaming audio to the server, and it's not necessarily going to pick up my voice over the background audio. But again, this is just a demonstration of how good the wake word detection is on this thing. So let me start the video. Be very, very and just keep in mind, this thing is right in front of the TV. It's right between the speakers. This is a pretty noisy environment. But if I say, okay, Nabu. Sorry, I'm not aware of any area called audio field, but I do stop have some familiarity with the road brand that they are well known. These are all made in Austin. Okay, so obviously, like I said, once it's actually picking up commands, it can't distinguish between the TV and me. But the wake word works extremely well. And I've even been able to do this, you know, across the room in the kitchen. And the big kicker is as good as this works, you'd think, oh, what about false positives? I have not yet had a false positive wake word. So when I've been listening to TV and listening to different programs and stuff, it has not had a problem listening when it's not supposed to. So the discrimination between truly wake word and not wake word are very, very good on this device. So I know in a lot of my reviews, I tend to go very in depth with the devices that I'm looking at, but in this one, honestly, I, I just don't think that's necessary. The Home Assistant Voice P just kind of works. It's boringly reliable. The wake word detection almost never messes up. So I don't really have much else to say, except that if you're comfortable with the price, and it's about 60 bucks, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but, but if you're okay with that and you're looking for dedicated voice hardware to trigger wake words and get that audio into your pipeline, I don't know that currently on the market you're going to find a lot better. Now, it's not the only thing that is going to be available, but right now it is kind of the best thing going. The only other thing I know that's kind of out there looming is Future Proof Homes has a satellite kit that they're releasing, and I think some of them are already out there. I tried to get in on the first batch pre-orders, but their email messed up, so I didn't get in on that. I do have one on pre-order, so you know maybe in a few months I may have one of those in for review, but you know we'll see. That's more of a DIY kit thing, and I don't know that that's going to be suitable for what everybody wants. It's it's probably not just going to be plug and play. So that's really all I got to say. The last thing in this video is a cheat shill plug alert. Uh, I do still have plenty of leak sensor circuits available, so if you're into ESP Home and Home Assistant, you're looking for good water leak detection, check out the link in the description. These are available on Etsy. But other than that, as always, if you got any feedback, comments, suggestions, feel free to leave them down below, and I appreciate your time. Thanks.